Good evening or good afternoon or good morning wherever you are in the world and welcome, welcome to our 30 minutes of embracing our heart and trying to understand the, the positive side of Lent, of embracing the crucified Christ from a heart of love, where we commemorate out of love the price he paid for us, for our freedom, for our joy. So let us just take a nice deep breath and breathe in his love for us. And in our out breath, let us bless his heart, his amazing heart. And as we breathe in again, let us breathe in that universal love. And in our out breaths, let us release love to our heart, our sacred wounded heart. And in our next in breaths, we breathe in the love of a father, mother, God, who truly cares for us. And in our out breaths, let us blow love to all here. And now relax. Relax and know that you are loved. Be still. Just be still for a few minutes. And just sense the peace and the love from the messengers of God. Who were assigned to each one of us to walk with us each step of our journey, to protect us, to guide us. Let us invite them now to come and assist us discern what is Spirit saying to us during this Lenten retreat. Let us be whole Enfold, hold, and listen to that inner voice, a voice of love, a voice of peace. Let us stay with that inner voice and let nothing intimidate us now because we are beloveds of God. And we are here on this sacred earth for a purpose. Some, it takes a lifetime for them to discern God's purpose for them. And for others, it takes just minutes to know, having listened to that inner voice, they know God's purpose for them. And that is to be an ambassador of peace to bring peace, to bring love and joy. Relax now. Relax in the arms of the Christ who calls you by your name. Be still. Be still. as we come round from that intro reflection, we share with you a reflection on from mind to heart. <clears throat> How do we concretely go about setting our hearts on God's kingdom? When I lay on my bed, not able to fall asleep because of my many worries, when I do my work preoccupied about all the things that can go wrong, when I can't get my mind off my concerns for a dying friend, 
What am I supposed to do? Set my heart on the kingdom. Fine. But how does one do this? How do we find the kingdom? There are as many answers to this question as there are people with different lifestyles, personalities, and external circumstances. There is not one specific answer that fits everyone's needs. But there are some answers that can offer helpful directions. One simple answer is to move from the mind to the heart by slowly saying a prayer with as much attentiveness as is humanly possible. This may sound like offering a crutch to someone who asks you to heal a broken leg. The truth, however, is that a prayer prayed from the heart does heal. A prayer from the heart does really heal. When you know the Our Father, the Apostles Creed, the glory be to the Father by heart, you have something to start with. You might like to learn by heart the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is my shepherd. A beautiful psalm. Or St. Paul's words about love to the Corinthians on the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. As you lie in your bed, Drive your car, wait for the bus, or walk your dog. Or just sit there stroking your kitty, like Molly with Miriam, Hootie with sisters Eleanor and Elizabeth in Philadelphia, with Martina and Kitty there. Slowly let the words of one of these prayers go through your mind. Simply try to listen with your whole being to what you are saying. You will be constantly distracted, yes, by the worries of this world. But if you keep going back to the words of the prayer, you will gradually discover that your worries become less obsessive and that you really begin to, in to start to enjoy praying and as the prayer descends from your mind into the center of your being you will discover its healing power that was taken from here and now by Henry J M Ewing and he gives us a quote from sacred scripture from St Matthew's gospel chapter 11 verses 15 sorry, verses 20 to 30, and in brackets, the theme of that reading, I will give you rest. They are the words of Jesus, I will give you rest. And the words of Jesus ring true when he says, not only will I give you rest, but take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am meek and humble of heart. What does that say? What are you feeling in your heart? That the beloved is meek and humble of heart. He's not a dictator. He doesn't write down all your wrongs. He loves you as you are. He embraces you where you are at if you will but allow him into your heart? Or are you afraid? Are you afraid? For the world we live in is a beautiful world. A 
sadly, mankind's quest for success has turned it into a place that's not so lovely, where people are killing one another for power, where many are deceitful, where they think nothing of wronging their brother by lies and misjudgments, where parents abuse their children, where children abuse their parents, where society at large seems to have fallen off the radar in matters of righteousness and justice. Let us come to this place. Let us be still here. And let us allow our heart embrace our divinity as a child of God. There is no greater gift than to be called by God, to be called by your name, to be called by your name, because God is love. And though we each have to go through our own dramas and battle illness, depression, despair, even suicidal ideation, But we offer those disabilities as God's ability to touch our life and to unite our hearts with his heart so that nothing, nothing is impossible to God. I know that from my own journey. One's disability is one's powerful prayer rather than fight, embrace and bless whatever handicaps we have, whatever weighs us down, we bless them and we release them to the light. And then we say, thank you, God, for releasing me of that burden, that worry, that fear. Relax now. Be still. Be still in the presence of love. And just allow Jesus the Christ to come to you now. He comes to you as a friend. He doesn't come as an enemy. He has no hidden agenda. He doesn't want you to convert to a religion. He wants you to love yourself, to embrace your divinity as a child of love. He wants you to receive that love. So let us sit in his presence and use the most greatest gift that he's given to us, the gift of free will, where you can choose to call on him or not. You decide. But I'm calling on him because I need him. I need him in my life as I battle with various disabilities because he gives me my strength. He gives me a purpose for living. He is the light that guides me when everything seems dark. So call on him now. Call on the beloved. And I guarantee you, you will never be disappointed. Receive his love. Just sit now in his presence and let him come to you. He's waiting for you to say, come Lord, I am here.
as you rest there in the presence of God, just visualize the Good Shepherd holding you, caressing you, and affirming within your being that you are loved, truly, truly loved. Experience that love and just be aware that all around you the angels of God are present. They are present with your guardian angel and with Jesus is his mother Mary, Magdalena and St. John and they're calling you, come, come my beloved. Let us care for you. Let us protect you. Let us shield you with the love of God against those who are not of God. Oh yes, they say they love God, but they give lip service to my name because their hearts are closed. Closed to love. Jesus is calling you back to love. Lent is not about suffering. Lent is a celebration of love. Because in Lent we celebrate the price that Jesus gave or made for our freedom. He gave his life out of love. And all he asks is not for you to give up chocolate or drink or going to the disco. He asks you to receive his love instead. And for that love to empower your heart, come back to who you are and why you are here. To live in joy not sadness, to live with hope, not despair. Allow me show you the one I'm talking about, for this is the one I love. This is the one I gave my life to 40 odd years ago, as a young man of 18, when I was ordained a nursing monk. And every year, I privately renewed my promise, not knowing the extent of that promise. But look into those eyes and there you will see the love he has for you. He's calling you by name and he wants you to come. This is the beloved. This is the one who wants you to surrender to love. Be still, be still and know that where two or three are gathered in his name, that he is here. I know he is here. I know he is here. Do you know that he is there with you? Open your heart and allow his love pierce your heart with selfless love. For there is no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends. And that's what Jesus asks of us, to become self not to become narcissistic, not to always insist on having the best of everything, but to accept what is given to us in love without grumbling or moaning. Because what we've been given is the promise of life everlasting. That's our guarantee the moment we surrender our heart to his heart.
and he wants us to celebrate that by showing the world that we have found the pearl of great price. That we do not live in the mind, nor are we controlled by the mind or the emotions, but that we are controlled by something much deeper and richer. And it is the love of the barefoot Galilean. It is his love that empowers us to get up from the gutter when we're down there in our despair, in our depression. When life is tough, he, in, he shows us another way. Instead of fighting him, to call on him and to let his love Give us the kickstart that we know we need to stand up and reclaim him and our divinity as a child of God. Not as a born again Christian or a fundamentalist Christian or a Jew or a Muslim, but to come into the cathedral of God, the landscape with the animal kingdom and their dance, the sacred dance, to Psalm 23. For in the eyes of God, religion is a label. What God wants to see is our heart, beating with love for him, and that love showing itself in nature, instead of abusing and destroying it. So let us find the prayer that touches us the most. It may be Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose and it goes on and on and it is full of love. Full of love. I'm going to read to you the prayer for tonight and the prayer from Charles Wesley. O thou who camest from above, thou pure celestial fire to impart, kindle a flame of sacred love on the mean altar of my heart. There let it be for thy glory burn with extinguishable blaze and trembling to its source return in humble prayer and fervent praise. O thou who camest from above, the pure celestial fire to impart, kindle a flame of sacred love on the mean altar of my heart. There let it for thy glory burn with inextinguishable blaze and trembling to its source return in humble prayer and fervent praise. And there it is. And there it is. So from mind to heart, the love of God is freely given and freely received through choice. My prayer is for you that you will find the beloved in the silence of your heart, that you will go into the woods or sit by your favorite tree and that you will ask for the beloved to come to you and speak with you. And as night follows day, I give you my word. If you are willing to really listen to your heart, you will not only hear him, but you will see him. And you will discover your life purpose and why you incarnated in this lifetime, in the Piscean era, the era of Christ consciousness. 
I want to thank you for joining me. May God reward you. May God bless you. And may his light shine upon you. Till we meet again. Namaste. Shalom. Inshallah. Paxet bonum om shanti. Solo di carita. Salam alaikum. And may the peace of the barefoot Galilean show you the way to love. God bless you.